Good morning. Good morning to each and every one of you. Welcome this morning to Peace Through the Word, a daily devotional ministry of Peace in the Valley Lutheran Church, Benson, Arizona, in the United States of America. And coming to you this Wednesday morning, uh, the 23rd of uh, June, uh, 2021. And such a joy to be able to welcome you uh, this morning worldwide, wherever you may be chiming in. Uh, I've already heard from people in various parts of the world. I've heard from Elvis Carrera down in Lima, Peru, Isaac Muchado in Madrid, Spain, and uh, many other people here in the United States as well. So it's so good to be able to uh, say to all of you, good morning and welcome you uh, to our ministry this morning. Uh, Brothers and sisters, this morning we're going to go back with uh, our theologian C.F.W. Wather because he's going to be sharing with us this morning on the power of God's Word. And uh, boy, let's take a look at that briefly for just a second. The power of God's Word. God's Word is incredibly powerful. You know, I really don't do it justice to be able to say that because... Uh, you know, all, all what Jesus does is he just has to speak his word and bam, <laughs> you know, things happen. You know, that's it. Nothing else. He doesn't have to do any movements or anything else. His word is just incredibly powerful, incredibly powerful. And, you know, he doesn't even really have to speak it. You know, it, you know, and, and his word, God's word, comes in, in three different forms. You know, there is the written word of God, which is his Bible. There is the spoken word of God that is preached in worship service or, or in conversation. And then there's the word in sacrament, where God takes his word and he attaches a physical element to it, water, bread, and wine. And then that becomes something totally different. It's no longer just water. It's no longer just bread. It's no water, n n not just wine. It becomes a means of forgiveness of sins. That water becomes a heavenly cleansing, a heavenly washing. That bread becomes and is the body of Jesus Christ. The wine is the blood of Jesus Christ simply because of his word and it gives forgiveness of sins. That's powerful. That's incredibly powerful. It goes, it's so powerful it goes beyond our human logic. And we can't figure it out. Yet people try and then they want to discount it because they want to elevate their human logic and their human reason over the Word of God. And the Word of God doesn't need our help either. Doesn't need our contributions, for which we really don't have any. It stands alone on its own merits. That's how powerful it is. So that's what we're going to be looking at this morning. And I pray that that's going to really bless you, incredibly so, because the ramifications of that are quite profound, all right? So my brothers and sisters, we come together in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Holy God, holy and most gracious Father, have mercy and hear us. And so my brothers and sisters, this morning, let's begin our time together by praying the wonderful prayer our Lord taught us, the Lord's Prayer. Arthur Fennell, good morning to you uh, over in the state of Oregon. So good to welcome you this morning to peace through the word, trusting all is well over in Oregon. So thank you, Arthur, so much for chiming in this morning. So brothers and sisters, together we pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 
Brothers and sisters, this morning as we begin our time together, we want to profess the Christian faith, which is very uh, critical that we do, using the words of the Apostles' Creed. This is what we believe and why we believe it. So together we profess. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and he sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Brothers and sisters, the passage of Scripture I want to share with you comes from St. Paul's letter to the Christian Church at Rome in Romans chapter 10, in verse 17. And listen to what this passage says in verse 17. Uh, it says, So faith comes from hearing, and hearing through the word of Christ. Let me repeat that. Faith, trust, trust in Jesus, saving faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. In other words, the word of God, the word of Christ is what saves, nothing else. Because that word of God is what creates faith, nothing else. Yet, unfortunately, we have people in Christians that think otherwise, think that at some action that they have to do in order to bring themselves to faith. You know, we just, confess, we just professed the Apostles' Creed and it has three big movements of God that's critical for your salvation. Those movements are number one, God's creation, his redemption, and his sanctification. And when we say that we believe in the Holy Spirit, what we're saying is we cannot bring ourselves to faith. We cannot make decisions to accept Christ and all this other nonsense that, that is prom, uh, promoted in other Christian camps. Can't. Because we can't bring ourselves to saving faith. It takes the word of God to do that, to, cre <clears throat> to create the faith. So, you know, it, it's futile to, 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 try to believe that, <laughs> you know? So, uh, so let's see how Dr. Uh, C.F.W. Wather is going to unpack this for us this morning from Romans chapter 10, verse 17. He says, if a person wants to be saved, first diligently hear, read, and examine God's word. Declaratory statement, period. Let me repeat that. If somebody wants to be saved, somebody wants to have sins forgiven, life eternal, and eternal life in heaven, which I think most people do, <laughs> then here's what you got to do. Diligently, that means with passion, with intentionality. Hear, read, and examine what? God's word, the Bible. Not your opinion, not your agenda, not your philosophical belief or whatever but simply God's word. What does he say? All right? So then whoever does not want to do this cannot be helped despite his prayers and concerns, for he remains in his natural darkness, in sin, and under God's displeasure. So if you're not willing to do that, What's CFW Wather saying? You're damned. You won't have sins forgiven. You won't have that. Because it doesn't come any other way. That's the only way it comes. 
It's real serious. It's real serious. So it says the Holy Spirit who must work everything that is good in a person does not work without means. That's another declaratory statement. Let me repeat that. The Holy Spirit who must work everything that is good in a person does not work without means. In other words, if these means are not there, guess what? Neither is the Holy Spirit. All right? So those means, God's word is the only means of grace through which he works. His word, nothing else. Not God's word plus whatever. Your contributions that you can't make anyway. It's simply God's word is the only means of grace through which he works. Even baptism and holy communion have power only because the earthly elements are connected with the heavenly word, like I said at the beginning. Without the word, baptism would be mere water and no baptism at all. And Holy Communion would be nothing more than bread and wine rather than Christ's body and blood. The Word of God is the, is the hand God extends to us from heaven to draw us to Him. Whoever does not hear His Word turns away from the divine hand and therefore cannot be saved. So what does that look like when it says, whoever does not hear his word turns away? In other words, when somebody is proclaiming God's words, like say, you know, let me give you, for instance, let's say somebody is, you know, thinking about doing something that is contrary to God's commands, his commandments. And so a person says, hey, wait a second, you know, you better be careful. You're, you, you're ready to be in violation of a particular commandment of God based upon what God's word says again. And then the person says, I'm gonna go do it anyway. That's what that, now that's what that looks like. That's not hearing the word and turning away from the divine hand. Therefore, it says, that person cannot be saved. Serious, very serious. calls for repentance so the word of God not only shows us the way to heaven but it alone awakens people who by nature are spiritually dead you see the problem and this is a big problem most people don't buy into this most people believe they've got some virtue in, the, in, in them in and of themselves even if it's just a little bit where the Bible says no there's no virtue in you at all that's why the Bible says, in man dwelleth no good thing. There's nobody righteous, not even one person. And people squawk that. Religious people squawk that. The reform camp squawks it. But they don't believe that for all the tea in China because they think that they're righteous, that they can make these decisions for Christ and everything else. No way. You know? So you're, we are spiritually dead. Ephesians 2, verse, uh, chap, uh, verse 1 says... You were dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walked. Well, if you're really dead, what can a dead person do? Nothing. The problem is people don't believe, don't buy into the fact that they're spiritually dead. They say, no, I'm not. I'm, I've got some life in me. So you've got a problem. You've got what you say and you've got what the Bible says. That's a big problem. All right. So it enlightens them so that they rightly learn to know themselves in Christ and it works faith in Christ in them. That's the word of God that does that. Therefore, St. Paul says, so faith comes from hearing and hearing from the word of Christ in Romans ten seventeen. As long as a person continues to hear God's word, he cannot give up hope that he can still be converted 
even when everything else appears utterly futile to him. You know, even though it seems like, man, you know, this makes no sense to me. But God's word says it. And you just simply need to rest in God's word. <laughs> okay? <laughs> okay? That's really serious. But if an unconverted person flees every opportunity to hear God's word, all right, this is serious, it is impossible for him to be saved unless the word eventually awakens him in the distress of death. That's why it's so important to make yourself regular usage of the means of grace, word and sacrament ministry. That's why it's critical because the longer a person stays away from that, the easier it is to um, uh, resist uh, hearing God's word. And that's putting yourself in danger. So the hearing, reading, and examination of the word are also required for a converted Christian to remain in the faith. You see, we've got this re re reformed camp, you know, that wants to promote this false teaching of once saved, always saved. Not true. There's not an ounce of scriptural truth for that. So the hearing, reading, and examination of the word are required for a converted Christian to remain in the faith. And the longer you stay away and you don't maintain regular use of the means of grace, word and sacrament ministry, the more susceptible you are to lose that saving faith. This is critical stuff. So if someone has sleep of his soul, he's in great danger of falling asleep again or sinking back into spiritual death. Yes, very much so. So the word of God must both awaken him and keep him awake. This is most certainly true. So even if someone has come to the knowledge of his sins and the danger that they, that they pose to his soul, he remains in great danger of relapsing into blindness. The word of God must continually remind him of his sins and their danger. Yes, most certainly. That's a constant for all of us. Someone who has experienced the comfort that comes from knowing that his sins are forgiven is still in constant danger of losing this comfort. The word must keep filling him with that divine comfort. It's got to. Has to. So um, the person who has started to walk the path of faith in evangelical sanctification can still easily lose his way and return to an errant path. You know, let me just tell you something. I'm seeing that being played out to me demonstrably with a very close relative of mine right now. That is happening. And it, 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 it's tragic. It's very tragic. All right? So for this reason, he must rely upon the word as his roadmap to keep him on the correct path or to restore him to that path, not on your human logic, intellect, or anything else that you might conjure up, which is what they're doing. Big time, huge. All right. So what earthly food and drink are to the body, the word of God is to the soul. As the body loses its powers and finally dies when it is deprived of food and drink for only a short time, so also the soul of the Christian loses its spiritual powers and sinks back into spiritual death when he fails to study God's word zealously on a daily basis. Daily. 
That's why I say if you don't have a resource, if you're not spending time in God's word daily, you're becoming very suspect to a problem. So what wood and coal are to the fire in the fireplace, <laughs> the word is to the fire of faith and love in the Christian's heart. As the fire in the fireplace immediately goes out when it is not carefully tended, so the fire of faith and love in the Christian's heart is extinguished when he ceases to study God's word. That's why I'm so... Uh, uh, pernacious, I guess, tenacious of getting people back into the word and, and, and sacrament ministry. Can't stay away, all right? A tree withers not just when it is out of dawn, out, not only when it is cut down, excuse me, but also when it is no longer watered. Likewise, a Christian falls from grace not just when he returns to the world and falls into obvious sin, but also when he ceases to hear and examine Scripture diligently. Did you hear that? When he makes the study of Scripture his constant concern, he is like a tree planted by streams of water that brings forth its fruit in its season and its leaves do not wither. So, brothers and sisters, it is paramount, it is critical that we spend dil time diligently in study and examining God's word on a daily basis for the reasons that have been communicated this morning. So I pray that that is really going to bless you um, tremendously. You really need to hear this message today and take it to heart. And I pray that by the power of the Holy Spirit, that'll happen. Okay. So we continue to pray. We cry to you, O Lord, in the morning. Restore to us the joy of our salvation and uphold us with a willing spirit. Our mouths are filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. Every day we will bless you and we will praise your name forever and ever. By awesome deeds, you answer us with righteousness. O God of our salvation, the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the farthest seas, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. He redeems your life from the pit and he crowns you with steadfast love and mercy. But that only happens, why? Through his word. Okay, so I had to put that caveat in there. <laughs> so hear our prayer, O Lord, let our cries come to you, we pray. We thank you, our Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept us this night from all harm and danger, and we pray that you would keep us this day also from sin and every evil, that all of our doings and life may please you. For into your hands we commend ourselves, our bodies and souls, and all things. Let your holy angels be that the evil foe may have no power over us. Amen. So let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless us, defend us from all evil, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I want to thank you beyond my human capabilities. <laughs> for chiming, us, chiming in uh, with us this morning to peace through the word. I really wish you could understand how much I appreciate it. Lynn Lawrence, thank you so much for chiming in this morning from Baltimore, Maryland. Really appreciate it. Appreciate it, all you people, so much. Love you more than you can imagine. And I thank you for your partnership in this ministry. I really do. And it is truly a partnership. All right. So... I want you to know that. <laughs> I really do. I really do. And so thank you so much. Brothers and sisters, I want you to go and have a great day in the Lord. Experience his blessings in, in your life. Um, we have a, a significant issue out here in southern Arizona. We got some pretty demonstrable fires going on that have been caused by lightning strikes in our mountains. 
And, uh, you know, it's very dry out here right now. And supposedly, hopefully, our monsoons start. I've had people tell me that uh, our monsoon season is supposed to start on the fiesta of St. John. And I think that starts, like, soon. And it looks like maybe we're getting some moisture coming in from Sonora, Mexico, and maybe that might start things. But we need it. We're very dry out here. And so we've got these fires going on that uh, are pretty demonstrable right now. So pray for that if you would. Uh, we'd appreciate that. We've got very high temperatures, triple digits, 113, 114, 115. Uh, I, I love that. I love this country so much. But uh, anyway, I want you to go and have a good day in the Lord. God's blessings to you. The wheels have been retracted, so have the flaps. So uh, I convey to each and every one of you tremendous blue and smoky skies. Amen.